Hey, hey, check, check. How y'all doing? Good. Good. How are you guys feeling? You guys all right? Wow. Yeah. Well, you still recovering from what we just saw? Yes. That was incredible, right? So I'm so glad we don't have to play right now. <laughs> Let's hear one more time for Coach Eggie. Right. 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 Huge inspiration for me. I mean, you know, I, I, I'm not going to go into it. If you, ever, if you don't know who Phil Eggie was before you just saw him, go go ahead and look him up. I mean, there's some amazing stories in the background around that. But, uh, I mean, without further ado, guys, what a great transition to you. And Switchfoot, and just the history we have with you guys. First of all, how about this? We'll introduce the band, obviously. You know these faces, but let's put some names behind the guys right here. Who's this right here? Drew. My name is Drew. I play guitar. I'm Tim. I play the low notes. <laughs> I'm Chad. I play drums. What? So I, I got a question. Drew, when was the first time you saw Phil play? Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, actually, I think it might have been here, actually. Yeah. I was um, playing on a side stage in another band. This was maybe back in the 90s, like before. Uh, in the 1900s. Uh, 1900s. <laughs> Anybody remember Altogether Separate? Yes. 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 I was in that band. We're on like a side it's stage or something. <laughs> And I saw him play, and yeah, legend, like unbelievable. I followed him. I f this is weird, you guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> I want to hear this. No one's gonna. This is the heart of the artist. This is the heart of the artist. <laughs> I followed him into the bathroom. <laughs> no joke. And I was. This is the heart. This is my heart. It's was getting it real here. And I wanted to meet him, but uh, when he came out, I just looked at him, and I couldn't say anything. <laughs> Give him a look. And he just walked out, and I was like, "I'm, I'm, I'm using the same restroom." That came out. <laughs> so I'm just some of That's kind of similar on. to how you met Slash. Like, well, oh, yeah. I'll, I'll give you guys that story too. Slash, that Slash. Me and we're tight. Me and Slash. We're, no, we're not. <laughs> so that's actually. I mean, who are your, you know, Switchfoot? We'll, we'll get into your history a bit uh, with us, but. You know, stepping back, who are your musical icons, whether it's, you know, mainstream, whatever you want to look at, that really inspired you and got you to, you know, where you are, I guess, either as a musician and just, yeah. Anybody yeah, I mean, so, so many artists, right? I, I like a lot of different kinds of music. Um, so growing up, it was the Beatles and Zeppelin and Police. Um, in high school, it was Foo Fighters and Radiohead and... Um, yeah, I mean, you know, I, I like good songs. Sure. Aretha Franklin to whoever. It's, if it's a good song, it's a good song, you know. All right. Yeah, I love it. Um, okay, let's let's step back into it. So, this is not your first time in a lot. I'm, I'm just going to guess that. Ours? Yeah. Switchboard. Oh, no, we've been here. <laughs> we've been here. Yeah. I was yeah, we've been here. here. We know this. We know a lot of you guys out there. We know this location, and even right. obviously going back to Clay's Park, I think one of my favorite stories. Yep. And you can verify this if this is true or not. Did you not take a bus here, like a van or something? You drove out here, I don't know when this was, or the 1900s, as you would say. But what was your first, do you remember your first time around? Or I any mean, experience from that? It would have definitely been in a van. Um, <laughs> We, we used to tour in a minivan, like a full soccer mom minivan. Um, Lots of cup holders. Which, uh, I'm still a big fan of the minivan, if I'm honest. <laughs> it's, it's a great vehicle, you should look into it. Uh, we were a three-piece, and so we didn't need a lot of space. So we'd kind of cram all our gear, and it was just Chad, me, and my brother John, and we'd just take turns driving, although Chad was the only one old enough to rent the van. <laughs> Unofficially, we took turns driving, but um, it was the, uh, you were like 22 or 23, and that was like, you know, you had to be that old to rent it. Yeah. Yeah, we'd drive all night cross country, sure. you know, drinking gas station coffee and just <laughs> just burning the midnight oil to get to a live fest. It was awesome. Yeah. I know, I remember, and obviously the beat stage, I think you guys played there. Oh, yeah. A lot of beat stages. <laughs> uh, I mean, you know, B stage was like the high water mark. We were still you know, like, like, 
We used to call it the donkey stage. It would be the, you know, the little thing that folds out, and it was maybe as big as it's right here. You know? That's right. It's the truck that pulls up and then folds yeah, into the stage. <laughs> All right. So, and then you, you know, obviously, you just continue to grow and grow and, and find this following. And um, I'm curious, like, at what point did you, you know, realize, okay, this music that we have is starting to resonate? Was it a certain album, a song? Um, you know, like, what moment did you realize, okay, this is actually something we're going to be doing for a little while? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I feel like the second album we made, New and Human, um, we had just toured our first album. Mm -hmm. The first album was written mostly while we were in high school um, and some college. And so the, the themes were like things that are super important at that age. Like what? What was an example? Chemistry class, yeah. like girls, <laughs> life. Faith, you know, like these are all the topics that for uh, an 18, 19 year old kid, it's, these are like you're wrestling with all these issues. Mm -hmm. um, and they felt important at the time and they still are, but then you tour it and you're like, okay, maybe I want to sing about things bigger than chemistry class. Sure. Um, and, and there are people listening to what we have to say. Granted, we're still playing the donkey stage, but yeah. you know, what, are the th what are the songs that we want to be singing for the rest of our lives that matter to us? And that's kind of been our mantra ever since. Awesome, awesome. And, and you, there, you feel like, um, to go far, that's a, that's a grandiose question, but... Um, yeah, I think, uh, you know, you start to accomplish goals that you set for yourself, and, and you kind of get there and go, wow, now what? You yeah. know, you have a big, big goal, and you accomplish it, wow, all right, what's, what's the next thing? And for us, I, I think we're constantly uh, wrestling with which songs to put on an album, or which which songs to put in a set list, mm -hmm. you know? And, and I think for us, it's about communication. That's the goal. Consistently looking for new topics and new ways to, to frame mm -hmm. the way that we see the world. I heard this quote the other day that um, it was a filmmaker topic, and he said that films are never finished, they're just abandoned. <laughs> like at some point, you're like, okay, I'm moving on to something else. And I feel that really resonated with me as an artist, because I feel like an album's never finished, the song is never finished, it evolves, it has a life of its own, but at some point you're like, okay, I'm gonna stop recording that song and record a new one, you know? Um, but the gift is that as an artist, you can, you know, when we play live, we get to give these songs a new life every single night. Sure. Um, and you never feel like you, you solve it. Right? We write about things we don't understand, and we wrestle with things, and that's part of the, uh, the human experience, that's part of the believer experience, you know, that we live in an incomplete world, and we are incomplete uh, creations that are being created and made new continually every day. Um, so as an artist, you, you're never like, yeah, nailed it, <laughs> you know, I, I solved it, it's, sure. it's, it's what keeps you coming back. Yeah, for sure. Just that continual growth is... Um, you never stop that. You guys know how that is. And, and uh, I struggled a lot with comparison, I think, in the first part of my life and career. And, and it's like, um, I still, you know, we all, you know, struggle with that sometimes. But as far as finding out who I am and what I'm meant to do, I think that's a part of my journey all the time. And um, as, I, as I lose my life, I find it in the Lord and, and I find that uh, there's always new things to to find out about what you can do, who you can influence. I mean, the, the music that we do is weaving into culture and into society uh, something much bigger than us. And you guys are a part of that. You know, we're weaving and salt and light, and we're also uh, changing the fabric of the society we live in and, and the world at large. And uh, there's a quote that I've heard recently, too, that kind of goes off what Tim was saying that's like, you know, you can have the laws of a country, give me the songs that I can change a nation. And so we feel like you, you resonate with the hearts of people, the songs go out there and in, impact culture in ways that you don't even know how it's happening, but that's just the voice that we've been given to do. Love it, love it. And that leads, you know, obviously you guys had this documentary that came out, uh, what, a couple of years now at this point. Um, yeah, Phantom West. Can you talk about that and that process as a band and deciding to go for this? And, uh, you know, I think family played a part, you know, in your career as a, you know, as a band. So, yeah, I don't know, just 
leaving, you know, looking at that project now, maybe a couple of years out, like what lingers as far as like a, something that was impactful and why you decided to do that, I guess. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's a, a film that really um, kind of showed a more personal side of what we struggle with um, as fathers and husbands, for one thing, you know, that uh, every time you leave home, as much as this is a gift and the best job in the world, there is a cost. And so there's an intentionality that comes with anything that costs. And uh, we want to make sure that we're singing songs that, that matter, you know, songs of hope. Um, music's fun. I love it. But it's not enough to uh, just have a good time and, and uh, you know, play songs that are fun. I want to play songs that impact me and that impacts culture. I want to see the world change. And we have seen a lot of change, but there's so much change that we need, you know, that I need personally and that we as a as a world need, and so you know that uh, that job never feels finished. Sure, I think Joel said yesterday in the heart of the arts for King of Country that was he had heard the quote that you know as a band or as a husband, the moment it's not or the moment it's, it's easy to leave your wife, you know, as you go on tour, that's when you should start to be concerned. As a band, I thought that was fascinating. But, um, well, shoot, all right, guys, I'll let you. Who wants to talk a little bit? Okay, you look very happy. All right. <laughs> So I'm going to try this and I'm going to repeat the question because I know you guys want to hear it. So shout the question, I should hear it, and I'll repeat it. So there was a, a Switchfoot getaway and a special thing happened, you said? You guys have been doing a Switchfoot getaway. For, okay, like talk about the Switchfoot getaway because I've never heard of this. I actually have seen it in the book. I've seen a few of you uh, that are here from the getaway. Uh, show of hands. Got super fans yeah. up here in the front, huh? Yeah, yes. I see those hands. That was that was two weeks ago, three weeks ago. It was so fun. Yes. Yeah. Where was this? What was this? It's in our hometown, San Diego. And um, a lot of brave people learning how to surf from far and distant lands such as Ohio. <laughs> Uh, boogie board, is that what you call it in your stomach? That's about it. Yeah, that counts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and, and they gave us this great book that had tons of stories, um, I mean, literally bringing us to tears of just how, it's really humbling, you know, because I think all of us, we, we don't see it, but we are part of a much larger story. And I think we're at our best when we see a glimpse of that, because it's so easy to be focused on just the small story that's right in front of us, but what's the larger, slower story that's being woven? Um, when we get glimpses of that, I think that's when we're at our best, and that being reminded that we're connected to other people's stories through these songs is really impactful for us. Thank you for that. Yeah, thank you for that question. Yeah, I was, I was reading some of the stories in that book, and it's interesting to me how a song can mean one thing to me, and maybe to us as a band, and we talk about well, what is it what does it mean and what is it communicating? And then to hear the stories in the book of how some of the songs have connected with someone's life personally, and it means something completely different to them. I just think that's the beauty of art, it's the beauty of music, to be able to relate to people outside of art in power. You know, We kind of throw the song out there and have someone on the other side of the world connect with it. It's a beautiful thing, it's really humbling. Awesome. Thank you for that question. I'll go in the pink there, you got my eye. So how do you love people that it's so hard to love? You know, somebody who hates you for your faith. Uh, I believe that's the question. Yeah, it's a, that's a huge question, right? Um, it's not easy. Um, I think I have to come back to the fact that God chose to love me uh, in spite of all my flaws, and he knows them all, you know? And, that's, and then, you know, I, I think the other side of that is that if you really sit down with someone and you hear their story, um, I've never not been impacted by that, right? And, and you, you see these divides, uh, disagreements, challenges with people that are difficult to you or maybe hateful to you. 
but then you know their story, you hear them uh, walk you through where they're coming from, and, and it, it kind of tears down those walls. We all have scars, we all have things. It's surprising, you know, someone that you think is just never had any opposition, everything, and then you hear their story and you're like, wow. Um, that's true for everyone in this room, I know. Um, so I think having that, that uh, humility and compassion and whether or not you get to know someone else's story, but to realize, you know what? That hate comes from a place of hurt that's very real for them, and we all have that. I'll jump back, oh, anybody else? Sorry. I'll jump back here so I can get somebody in the back. I don't want to This is my, ooh, this is my exercise. There you go. Like, who you got? Who's got it? Oh, right there in the sunglasses. I'm gonna do. Go for it. Hi, I'm a songwriter, and I would like to hear the process of your guys' songwriting. Uh, awesome. Songwriting is weird, right? It's weird. It's so weird. It's like sausage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I get that. Well, you, you, you like the way it tastes, but you don't want to see how it comes together. And I feel like it's different every time, you know? I assume, I, I, I picture sausage being like that as well. I feel like they're just kind of winging it. They're making it up as they go along. Yeah, throw this in there. Um, I'm, I'm continually fascinated as well with how other people write because it's, it's weird. Um, sometimes, like what Chad was saying, uh, you, you hear someone else's story with a song and you're like, Oh, that's what that means. Because sometimes there's there's a phrase that comes to you and it feels true, but you don't unpack it until years later. And sometimes it's through a story of, um, where someone else is literally telling you what your song means. And you're like, oh, you're right. <laughs> what comes first for you guys? Is it the writing process or of like the lyrics and, and the heart of the song? Or is, is it jamming and, and, and finding out this is what matches together? Yes. Yeah. All, all of that. <laughs> it's true. No, it's seriously. I should join so, the band. You know, sometimes it's, you know, just a guitar riff, or sometimes it's John on an acoustic guitar, and the song comes all at once, you know? Um, I can just repeat what John says a lot of times because it's so true. It's like ar archaeology, right? Where you're digging, and sometimes you find an old shoe, and there's nothing there. Sometimes you find a whole underground city, and you're like, whoa, I'm just digging and finding things. And there's something to the discipline of it that just like an archaeologist digs a lot without finding anything. Um, as long as you enjoy the process and you're not focused on results, you know, of output. Because as an artist, you enjoy writing, whether or not there's output from that. It's the process that's enjoyable. And I think it's important for us to continually come back to that. Let's enjoy the process and let's dig because that's what we love to do. And sometimes you don't find anything. Sometimes you find a chicken bone and you're like, oh, and I thought that was a dinosaur bone, but it's a chicken bone. And, and sometimes you find the whole thing intact and you're like, whoa, I, I don't know how long this has been here, but it's here. Awesome. All right, we'll do one more question here, guys. I see this guy. Okay, in the butt. I'm going to come to you. You're jumping. We got a jumper. Come on, this going to be a good question. It's getting real. It's getting real right now. This guy has been waiting all year to ask this question. He's journaled about it. He's prayed about it. Here it comes, you guys. Oh, guys. All right. What's your name? Michael. All right, Mike, you get the last question here. Let's switch for it. What are each of your favorite albums? Like Switchfoot a, albums. Oh. Switchfoot albums? Thanks, Mike. Is that the quality I heard? Switch for album? I mean, <laughs> that's, that's like someone saying like, okay, in a safe place, just a, you know, a few hundred of your closest friends, tell me like, honestly, who's your favorite kid? Because <laughs> all of these albums we've, like, we, we have history with and we've kind of nurtured and raised and they've raised us and, um, 
So I, maybe you're not allowed to have a favorite kid, but maybe on a certain day, you know which one's your favorite. <laughs> this is a very political answer. Right? Yeah. 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 Not that I'm going to hurt our album's feelings or anything, it's just how I feel. Yeah. Is that, um, you know, every day is different and certain songs jump out to you as like, oh, that, that, that hit me today. You know? So what hit you today? I'm, um, I'm going to get an answer, I'm trying. I took to listen to Switchfoot all day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, we, yeah. we sound checked, um, uh, Say Like You Mean It, and we had to play that. Wow. We haven't played any of these songs in a while, first of all, because we've been on hiatus this year, which has um, been very different for us and challenging and, and amazing and a lot of, that's a whole other conversation, but um, yeah, that, that's Say a song like on Ice Verses and that, that, that was a fun one today. Awesome. All right, gentlemen, you're not going to get away either. We've got to get a child from you. Um, I'm a fan of the song Dark Horses. <laughs> Off of the album, I should know this. Vice Versa, sorry. Two for two, Vice Versa. Yes, so. Oh, oh man. I can't, you know, that's two for two on Vice Versa. You gonna pick something different? You yeah. Gonna... Oh. <laughs> you say it like you mean it's off Fading West. Is it? Yeah. 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 it? It is? Yeah. 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 Yeah.